The following podcast is sponsored by Structure Tech. I need to know how well you are prepared for winter. I have a winter prepared checklist. Have you done everything you tell everybody else to do? And are you properly prepared when old man winter shows up? Welcome, everyone. You're listening to Structure Talk, a Structure Tech presentation. My name is Bill Ulrich, alongside Tessa Murray and Ruben Saltzman. As always, your three-legged stool coming to you from the Northland, talking all things houses, home inspections, and anything else that's rattling around in our head. On today's episode, we have a pop quiz. (laughs) It's true. And Tessa and Ruben have been studying but they don't know what I'm actually going to ask them. I gave them a task to read up on so we can have a conversation, but I'm going to flip it. Uh Uh-oh. Yes. Okay. (laughs) I need to know how well you are prepared for winter. I have a winter prepared checklist in test form that I'm going to be handing out. Have you done everything you tell everybody (laughs) else to do? And are you properly prepared when old man winter shows up next week? Ooh, I'm feeling pretty good about this, Bill. I'm feeling pretty confident, but I, uh, I'm looking really? forward to it. Do you have salt in your garage next to your door for the first ice storm that comes through so you can actually, you know, navigate the driveway and get to the mailbox? Ooh, that's a good one, Bill. I should. I don't know if I do. I'd have to go look. I, I surely have some leftover from last year, but to your point, that's not being proactive. Okay. yeah hose is disconnected oh you know it okay Tessa, wait what about you salt no salt but hoses are disconnected yes i have disconnected my hoses good okay. good man way to yes. go bill the one thing i didn't do was hook the air compressor to the hose on the on the reel and try to blow out the water that was oh. in all the hose that's wrapped up have you ever done that yeah every year i try to what why because if you ever need to drain your water heater in the middle of winter and you need a hose, oh. you don't want your hose. Not mm, to hose. I've been there. <laughs> I've taken my hose inside and I had to let it sit there like overnight to let it thaw. thaw. And then hmm. it melts all over the floor and you got a big old mess. <laughs> Although my, my trick, you know, growing up, we had a hockey rink in back. So we'd always be using hoses outdoors in the dead of winter. And you'd always just to, to get all that water out, you just take one end of the hose and you lift it up above your head and you pass the hose through your hands and you keep passing it through until you finally reach the other end of the hose. And gravity does that trick for you, Bill. Now, of course, mm-hmm. you'd have to take it off the reel entirely. And maybe in your case, a compressor would actually be easier. But Have you seen these hoses when they come off of these reels in cold weather? They look mm-hmm. like, you know, a long... Remember the lady from Little House on the Prairie, Nellie? She had those really tight uh, kind of curls in her head. <laughs> That's what I the do. hose looks like. It's like impossible to, to lift over your head, even if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. You got to do it before it's frozen. Well, or even gets cold. Right. I probably don't have the best hoses that money can buy. That might be the problem. Yeah. yeah. You got to get rubber. What about your sump pump? Is it already? It won't be frozen? Do any lines running across your yard? Have they been disconnected and properly drained out? You know, shout out to the previous owners of my home. Mm. They ran PVC. There's a PVC, three inch PVC line running from the side of my house underground. And it runs out probably almost a hundred feet and terminates at daylight somewhere in the backyard. So I don't need to wow. mess with any of that. that There's was an air a, gap there on the outside? There is an air gap. Yes. Nice. So that, that was a really nice move they made. Wow. Yeah, Have you heard awesome. your sump running in the wintertime where you're at? I don't think so. Okay, you're think high so. and dry then, so it's yeah. not really a concern anyway. No, okay. but even if it was, I'm good. What about your, we just went through daylight savings, batteries in your smoke alarms. Where, how are you sitting for batteries? Oh, batteries and smoke alarms. Bill, you bring that up. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I do not change the batteries in my smoke alarms because... I'll tell you what, the manufacturers tell you, you're supposed to change those batteries. I can't remember if it's like every six months or every year. It's something ridiculous. They they tell you to change the batteries way more often than you need to. And I've found batteries last a lot longer than what the manufacturers say. And I had had somebody, I, I think it was, it was a realtor. And yeah, his name was Jeff. And he, he had said, hey, Ruben, I heard this rumor that, you know, if you use these cheap batteries in the smoke alarms, like these generic ones, they're not going to work. 
or they're going to go start chirping in the middle of the night after just a couple of months. Is there any truth in this? I said, Jeff, I don't know. That's a new one for me. I never heard it, but I will check it out for you and I'll let you know. Like I said, this is like six years ago. So I bought a whole bunch of super cheap $5 smoke alarms and I bought all of the cheap, cheapest batteries that I could find. And you'd think it'd be easy to find a bunch of generic nine volt batteries. But okay. after I had about five of them, I was just kind of going broke. I couldn't find anything else. I went to all the stores I could think of, so, but I, I bought a bunch of junky nine volt batteries and I put them in those smoke alarms. I mounted them on my ceiling and I played the waiting game. And I just shared the results of that a couple of weeks ago on the blog. As it turns out, you know, nine volt batteries last a really long time. The longest one was some off brand you've never heard of called North Tech. Uh, no offense, North Tech. You're valid. You matter. <laughs> <laughs> they they only sell it at Menards and that nine volt battery lasted 65 months and that smoke oh alarm gosh. before it started chirping at you before it started chirping yeah oh my gosh and as kind of a control i used an energizer it's the one that the smoke alarm manufacturer recommended the energizer lasted 62 months and i used a rayovac battery a certain type of rayovac and that one lasted 61 months so out of these batteries i mean i i had a few that lasted over five years years. now granted i was not pressing the test button on them that would have reduced the battery life every time that horn sounds Mm -hmm. it's gonna drain a little bit from that battery i wasn't doing that so maybe in the real world if you test it as often as you're supposed to it's not going to last a full five years but that is a really long time. Wow. And I just don't think it's worth it to replace your battery every year if you're doing that, especially if you've got hardwired smoke alarms that just have a battery backup, which is what I have in my own house. So there's my long term advice for you. And I guess I'm kind of saying do as I do, not as I say. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Every six months, people change your smoke alarm batteries. Yeah, there we go. Every six months. <laughs> Follow manufacturer's and, instructions. Yeah. And, but you know what, that brings up something else that I discovered. So I've got all these batteries to get rid of. And, you know, I don't know how, how you guys deal with batteries, but I've got a five gallon bucket that I keep in the garage. And whenever batteries are spent, I put them in that bucket. And every few years, I'll take that bucket to a recycling place like Home Depot or whatever. You know, they've got like a big bin in the entryway. And so I'm being a responsible person, getting rid of my batteries, recycling them. I took them into Batteries Plus the other day. And I said, yeah, I got to get rid of these. And the guy there tells me we don't take them. I mean, we'll we'll take them, but you got to pay us to take them by the pound. I was like, oh, since when is that? He goes, 1996. Since 1996. It's actually been legal to throw your batteries in the garbage. You don't need to recycle them. They quit. Do they have harmful things? No. 1996 was the year that they quit adding mercury to batteries. That was the harmful thing that you didn't want going in a landfill. They don't do it anymore. And I thought maybe I just got a crazy sales guy at this store. So I I looked Mm -hmm. it up myself. Sure enough, you go to the, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency website And they've got information on there saying, you are perfectly fine throwing away your traditional household batteries in the garbage. And I'm talking about like double A's, triple A's, C, D, nine volt Mm. batteries, all your traditional disposable batteries. You throw them away. There is nothing that can be recycled. I have a whole bag of them sitting in like a Ziploc bag. They're all spent and they're up in this cabinet, which almost, they almost fall on me every time I open the cabinet door because I keep stuff for some odd reason. I have piles of crap laying around that I'll never use, but it's there if I need to look up a receipt from 2011, I guess. Well, now you know what to do. Yeah. They're yeah. Gone in the garbage. Interesting. Yeah. The yeah. guilt is gone. Thank you, Ruben, for busting that myth. I, yes. I, I don't feel bad about throwing one in the trash anymore. What about those little button batteries? Are they common household batteries? I don't know round ones that I don't know. I didn't throw those away because I didn't actually look that up. So I still have a Hmm. small little pile of those. 
I'm probably going to drop those off at some recycling center or yeah, I probably will. But the one thing I will tell you is if it's a rechargeable battery, like nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, any of those types, you do need to recycle those. Mm. You still got to recycle your rechargeables. Hmm. Okay. Well, along those lines, so if they stopped using mercury batteries in 1996, how come light bulb manufacturers like that were making CFL bulbs were able to use mercury in those? Like if you have a CFL bulb in your house, you know, those ones that are kind of twisty, yeah, yeah. spirally, yeah. like you're supposed to take those to a, like a hazardous waste place, right? Because of the, oh yeah. Them. Yeah. I remember when I used to work at Home Depot every once in a while, one of those batter, one of those bulbs would break uh-huh. and we had to go get the material safety data sheet instructions oh. on cleaning up CFL bulbs or, or fluorescent bulbs uh, and not, not just CFL, but any type of fluorescent bulb because of the mercury. And I remember the instructions were crazy. It was like, you're supposed to wear some respirator uh-huh. and you need to have this special procedure of sweeping and the type of broom you use. And then you use tape on the ground and you oh got to wear all these gloves and then you got to bundle it. And we had to put it in a special spot for pickup. It was just it was nuts what you had to do if you broke one of those fluorescent bulbs. And those no one things. ever does that in their own home if that happens. Never, never. Yeah. I remember <laughs> I remember growing up before we knew this was such a thing, uh, we'd be on construction sites with my dad and we would gleefully destroy those four foot bulbs because they'd kind of pop. And uh-huh. I remember just smashing them by the dozens, oh, no. just having no idea. <laughs> Is that why you take bags of old batteries to, to recycling places now to make up for your, your irresponsible this younger is, yeah, behavior? This is my atonement. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Those bulbs were incredibly durable for the length and the thickness of that material. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised they didn't just break looking at them. I mean, they were, <laughs> <laughs> they were. Just, there's nothing to them once they're once you actually see a flake of it. So hmm. yeah, they were ridiculously thin. Okay, back to the checklist. Yeah, Have what were we talking about? The- yeah, <laughs> this is the battery <laughs> episode, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it, you hijacked it, is what. You sorry, said. I'm sorry, bro. Okay. Are all the leaves out of your gutters? Will will ice the water that melts off your roof at any point this winter happily flow to the ground? Oh, heck yeah. I took care of that. I was so diligent. I took care of that last week, Bill. Got my extension ladder out and I I cleaned my gutter. It is Do you have gutters all the way around thing. your house? You have a hip roof, right? I've got gutters in back i'm pretty sure yeah i've got them in back but i don't have any trees in back so it's not an issue back there it's it's only at the front where i got this tree that kind of overhangs it and i've got to clean them out a few times a year actually it's not just a once a year thing and i always know it when there's a big rainstorm and i see water hitting my window and I just cringe because <laughs> I know my gutter is overflowing and I'm not going to go out in the middle of the rainstorm, but I, oh, that drives me nuts. I get a bunch of debris in gutters and we don't even have, I mean, we've got gutter guards and we've got, I have no idea how all this stuff gets in there. It's just. You've it's got like, the screen on, on top of yours. Yeah. And it, it does. There's there's mud. There's yeah. mud that gets in it. Yeah. You get a bunch of dust that settles on the roof and then it washes down and whatever or the that little helicopters is. get stuck in there. Yeah. And, yeah. Block well, everything and, off. And whatever it is, I mean, the leaves start to disintegrate and mm-hmm. they start kind of turning back into dirt at some point. And yeah, yeah, you get a bunch of gunk in the bottom of your gutter tray. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like the, the gutter guards just we had them in the house I lived in growing up and it, I always remember just battling that and still having to, to lift it off, get the gunk out with all the, you know, debris that was rotting in the gutter and then put the thing back on. I'm like, why are we doing this? Yeah. It's easier to clean it if you don't have the gutter guard on it. Well, but- some sort of punishment your parents were doling out for you coming home <laughs> at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> Uh, you know, what's funny. I actually, I liked getting on the roof when I was little and doing that. My dad and I would do that when I was probably I'd say like late elementary school age, middle school age, he trusted me, but it was, it was just a simple ranch house, you know, it's probably like a four 12 pitch. And it was just, yeah, it was a really easy roof to walk. There's something magical about that. Getting up on roofs when you were a kid, when you were a kid. I loved it. Yeah. We used to shoot uh, bottle rockets at each other. Somebody would go on the roof and somebody would, I mean, 
<laughs> probably wasn't the smartest thing to do. Don't when the bottle rocket would hit the <laughs> roof next to you, there were a lot of granules that went flying. <laughs> Oh my don't do that yeah. that's not that was not smart of us and i have no idea why we're where you we haven't lost an eye or a finger or something <laughs> all the dumb things that we did over the years uh, do you guys own snowblowers and have they been fired up fresh gas I. In the tank? I i have not fired it up yet it's probably about time to do it but i'm dutiful about winterizing it i always i always drain it out just about all the way. I add a little bit of, uh, you know, stabilizer, stable or whatever in there or sea foam. And then I run the rest of the gas out until it's dead. So I figured the last thing that went through the carb is, is that uh, stuff that's supposed to make it a little safer. And it always starts up, you know, immediately in the fall. That's, that's been a good practice for me. Is there anything you do with your lawn to make sure that it, I mean, is there something you're supposed to do with your lawn before it gets super cold? I don't know, but hold on, Bill. On snowblowers, do you have a snowblower? Me? Yeah. No. Okay. Because it's been stolen. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what, what if what of the not so great things about living in the uh, sustainable, sustainable urban, urban core? core? Yeah. It oh, was, wait, you I mean, had didn't your your really beautiful ice fishing house get stolen last winter too? Right out of a parking lot in a grocery store in St. Paul. Yes. Didn't we talk it about did. that? It did. It's part oh of, gosh. yeah, it's, it's part of the risk of living here, but no, the last time I had a snowblower, we, for some reason or another, the garage door didn't go down at night. We went in the house. We had mm. been out for dinner. It was, we got home late, whatever. I thought I shut the garage door. I thought she shut the garage door. She thought I shut the garage door, woke up in the morning and the snowblower was gone along with some other things. So oh, no. we, we were idiots and paid the price for it. But that thing was, it was just horrid. It would just about kill you from the fumes that were coming out of it while you're (laughs) using it. So it's better off that it's hopefully not being used by anybody at this point. So. Oh, funny. Mm. Yeah. You probably have a four stroke, something that's like six feet wide and no, you know, passes it's done. Well, there's two types of snow blowers. Usually there's a single stage or a two stage. And with the single stage, it's just this paddle that spins really fast and it's got rubber on the ends of it. And it's kind of self-propelled. It's like, if you lift up the handle, the paddle starts hitting the pavement and it pulls itself along Hmm. and growing up, you know, those were just kind of a cheesy way to do it. It's like, you might as well almost shovel, but they've got some pretty powerful single stage now. Mine is like a seven horse and that thing will chuck the snow. And the beauty of it is you can almost jog if it's a light snow. I mean, you can go so fast with those things. It's however fast you want to go. And I'll go outside and I'll be, I'll, I will start and end before my neighbor's even halfway done. And they started before me. I mean, oh. it's, you, you can really cruise wow. with those things and, and they work really well for all but the really heaviest snows. But I, I still, I, I haven't had a single snow where I couldn't get through it with my single stage snow st- thrower. So that's one of those few areas where I say uh, bigger is not better. Hmm. Yeah. You didn't have that in the Halloween blizzard. I can assure you that that wasn't going to do anything during that blizzard. Oh, I've told you what I did during that blizzard, didn't I? The Halloween no. blizzard of 1991. <laughs> <laughs> what did you Tessa, do? You Tessa, you weren't born yet, so you wouldn't know. I, <laughs> no, I was actually kidding. in Ohio at that point in my life. Yes. <laughs> That, that was, uh, I think it was like the second or third year that we had a paper route. Me, hmm. my brother, and my dad. And I think I would have been in junior high. And it snowed and snowed and snowed. And it was like three feet of snow. And we were new to this. So we're like, well, the, you know, the paper's got to be delivered no matter how much snow there is. And we went trudging through that. And I think what should have been about a one-hour paper route took us about four hours. Oh. I mean... <laughs> We got to that station, started packing stuff at maybe 3, 3.30 a.m. And we didn't get done till like 7 a.m. And I thought, this is the worst money I've ever made in my life. This is... And then you quit. <laughs> we stuck it out. I don't know. I think we must have done that for another year or two. And I still look back on it as some of the worst money I've ever made. That's, that's... <laughs> I, I always joke around that I've never had a job I didn't like, but I always forget about the paper out. Hated that job. I don't advise it. Is that when you started getting up at 3.30 in the morning on a regular basis? No. I I, I mean, yeah, I started doing it then. <laughs> 
but it made me hate it. And I rebounded and uh, I didn't start my morning routine until probably 10 years ago. I mean, because okay. no junior high time. kid should be up before noon. Amen, Bill. I totally agree with that. I remember that blizzard too. I was, I was living out in Western Minnesota, going to school and I was going to come home and I got like a mile out of town and it was just chaos. And I thought, nah, they'll find me dead in a snowbank if I don't turn around and go back to my apartment. So <laughs> oh. stuck it out and I went home the next weekend. So anyway, that was, it was the craziest thing you've ever seen though. I mean, I've heard about the armistice day blizzard that was so crazy but this is some weird stuff. I was like, wow. And there were a lot of people I can tell you who were behind on that winter checklist and they were done. There was no <laughs> saving them because that snow was here for the whole entire year after that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it didn't no melt. Hmm. What do you do yeah. with your lawnmower? Do you stick that in a shed and, and yeah. do you drain all the gas out of that? Uh, it's, it's a riding mower and I, I just got a different one in the last year and I tried getting all the gas out and I couldn't. So I just added stable and uh, I keep my fingers crossed now. Yeah, those, mm-hmm. The motors are so good on those now. And uh, <laughs> It feels like the bigger the engine, the more robust it should be. Do you have a lawn irrigation system? Uh, yes. Both of you guys do? Yeah, I do. Did I, you guys winterize those? Always. Yeah. Blow out Early the, October. the lines? Yeah. I mean, Ruben plays with fire. I, I call them in like mid-September. There's What's the point of watering your grass anymore? It's like the days aren't even hot. There's hardly any evaporation. Yeah. I do it when, when my neighbors do it. You know, we got a neighborhood thing. One of the neighbors says, Hey, so-and-so is going to be out. Mm-hmm. Leave a check on your door. All right. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's the, really the biggest thing you can make a mistake on here as far as winterization goes, hoses, right. Or irrigation. Yeah. 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 All that water stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You might end up with a massive icicle in your gutter. If you don't clean out your gutters. Sometimes I wonder how gutters don't just fall right off when they're there's all that weight in a 40 foot house. <laughs> well, and sometimes they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ice dams can, can destroy them. Do you think there's some adherence? Like when the dam is all the way up the roof and it's wrapped around the gutter, there's just nowhere for the gutter to go, even if it wanted to fall off. It's all just one piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuck. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yep. Are we going to have a, a winter that's, you know, worthy of Minnesota this year? Cause last year was kind of a, I'm not even sure it was a winter. We barely got any snow. That's because I bought snowmobiles last year, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah. it works. This year, we're going to get lots of snow. Huh. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Have you read you the Farmer's Almanac? Crossed. I do not read the Farmer's Almanac. I'm just, I'm declaring it. Okay. I'm throwing <laughs> it out there. I'm feeling it. Yep. Are we missing anything? I, you, know, it's... You, you know what? I think, well, we just had a podcast talking about mechanical ventilation. I was just thinking about ERVs and HRVs. And Ruben, I, I know you've got one at your house and my parents have one at their house too. Did you clean off intake vents and check the filters on the inside and have you turned it on? Yes, I have turned it on. I checked the intake at the exterior. I did not check the filter. I should test. Mm, yes, yes. I know Thank you. my dad, when I um, talked to him about maintaining the, the HRV, he was really good this summer. And he actually took the whole thing. He took both filters out and the core out, followed the directions and washed it with a hose, let everything dry and then put it back in. So it is a like a squeaky clean filters and core in the HRV at their house. Wise, wise. He's on is that a of rental it. house or is that his house? It's a rental house, but... Uh, those things are not maintained. So he went after it when I explained to him how, how important it was. His landlord should be proud of him. Yeah. Should be. Yes. <laughs> and ashamed of themselves for not offering to give some compensation for, you know. Right. They should a, be here's paying an up him for that. Of a pizza or something. Yeah. Thanks for the hard work. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> now I love winter. I, I can't wait for it to get cold and get some ice on the lakes and get out there and do some fishing and if you're going to live in this place, you may as well get outside and enjoy. You got to find something to do. Yeah. yeah. Winter... Otherwise it is just unbearable. Yeah. Yep. Your snowmobiles, is this the first time for you to venture into that, that toy? Last year. Yeah. Yep. What did you think? Oh, I, I was in love. I just wish there was more snow. That's all. At, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be out doing it as much as I possibly can this year. And I've got state trails that start about two blocks from my house. So it's, it's pretty easy to get on and I'm going to have my son doing the, uh, the certification course any, uh, about two weeks now. 
and then he's going to have his license. He's he'll, he's 13 and that's what you need to be to get licensed to drive by yourself. So he'll get his license too. So I'm, how does Anna I'm, feel about that? She, she cool? feels good. You know, he's, he's been driving ATVs at the family cabin since he was about five. So he's no stranger to motorsports. Does so Lucy he, get to drive the snowmobiles yet? She's only 10. So oh, no. no, not yet. No, um, we're going to, we're going to take this one seriously. I mean, up at the cabin, yeah. we got a couple of really small ATVs, but these snowmobiles are gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out, the instructor who's teaching the course has one leg <gasps> and you can guess how he lost his other one. Oh my gosh. Let that be a lesson to all you kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was a snowmobile accident. So Gosh, it's no joke. That's serious. Yeah, that is yeah. very serious. We didn't wow. have them growing up, but our neighbors did. And it was sort of a rite of passage to try to get this one started. It was no <laughs> less than 250 pulls. <laughs> I, I think every kid should have to suffer through that. If they want a snowmobile, they, they should have to have to, you know, pull start these things and, <laughs> and figure out how to get it started when it's completely flooded. Yeah. Uh, that was, those were the good old days. Yes. Yes. Totally agree. That reminds well, me of watching my dad try to start the lawnmower when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> those push lawnmowers. Water technology has yep. come just a little, yeah. little ways since then. Yeah. We should probably consider putting a wrap on this. We've waxed about things that I'm sure nobody really cares about, but oddly enough, I find interesting. So it's a fun show. Yeah. <laughs> fun episode. And did you take that battery out of the smoke alarm and put it on your tongue just to see if there was anything left in it? No, that's, that's something that every older sibling has to encourage a younger sibling to do <laughs> is to try touching your tongue to that, but it's never a pleasant experience. I can't help it. I can't help it. You do it's, that, Bill? Is this thing really dead or not? No, nope, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Oh, doesn't that burn your tongue? No, it's just a minor inconvenience but oh, okay. that reminds me who's that who's that youtube guy who does um who does these like um experiments with electricity do you, yes. you know what i'm talking about i definitely know who you're oh. talking about i wish i could remember his name but he 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 does these experiments where he actually shocks himself quite um, severely severely over, shocks and over again yeah yeah he's quite entertaining what could possibly go wrong <laughs> well only yeah. one thing yeah <laughs> refer back to uh, refer back to our episode about electricity that we just had with Jason Brosen. Yes, mm -hmm. bad things can happen. Yeah. Anyway, we should put a wrap on it. This is going to drop right around Thanksgiving, so I hope you guys have a fantastic Turkey Day and you get to spend it with people you enjoy. And there are no arguments about vaccines or politics <laughs> or religion. So <laughs> thumbs up. All right. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. You've been listening to Structure Talk, a Structure Tech presentation. My name is Bill Ulrich, alongside Tessa Marie and Ruben Saltzman. Thanks for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great one. For more information on how we can provide you with the right information about your home before you buy or sell, contact us at StructureTech1.com.